Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm out here on the range today courtesy of Morphe's with a U.S. Marine Corps documented Johnson light machine gun. I have been wanting to try shooting one of these for quite a long time, and it's very exciting to get the opportunity today. So, the Johnson was adopted by the Marine Corps in particular for use by uh, the Paramarines, the U.S. Marine Paratroop Regiment. They needed uh, guns with a lot of firepower that could also be uh, stowed easily or, or disassembled, taken down for use with paratroop drops. Now, the paramarines didn't end up actually jumping into combat anywhere, but what they chose for their equipment were Johnson light machine guns that you can pull the barrel out of easily and quickly, and folding stocked Rising M55 submachine guns. And the paramarines, uh, their, their table of equipment was 50% these and 50% Risings. They had a ton of firepower in those units. And the Johnson would end up doing a lot better than the uh, the Risings in retrospect. So the, the Johnsons ended up with a fantastic reputation in combat. These were on places like Guadalcanal. Um, Edson's Raiders had these at Bloody Ridge on Guadalcanal. And by all, all accounts, this should be a very handy, very convenient, portable, out six light machine gun. So let's give it a try. We have a rather unique magazine, single stack, 20 rounds, and it's got this retention catch sort of thing in the front, no feed lips. And what we do is drop this in here and this tab will ride up into that, lifts the retention spring out of the way. And now this just feeds straight into the action. Now, one of the other things about the Johnson is that it will fire from the closed bolt in semi-auto or from the open bolt in full auto. So in semi-auto, you can get good, uh, good controllable, accurate single shots. In open bolt, in full auto, you get the advantage of not having a round in the chamber so you don't have cook-offs. And because the chamber's open, the barrel can cool a little bit faster, which could be relevant because it's a relatively thin profile barrel. So we'll start with a few rounds in semi. Okay, one thing that I noticed, and I've heard this from Johnson light machine gun owners before, and I'm gonna say it's true just based on the semi-auto. These guns kick. Like, they, they kick more than you would expect. I would say this has as much or more kick than an M1 Garand, despite the fact that it weighs 50% more. And I think that's just a result of high bolt velocity hitting the back of the receiver and transferring felt recoil into me, the shooter. Oh. Uh, let's go ahead and switch this guy to full and see how that is. Now, in order to do that, right now I've got a round chambered, was set to semi. It's only going to fire full auto from the open bolt. So what I need to do is open the action. It's going to eject the one round that was in the chamber. It's now going to lock open because in full it fires from the open bolt. And now I'm good to go in full auto. That is definitely a punchy cartridge or a, a punchy gun. Um, it does in fact have just as much recoil in full auto as it does in semi. It is very difficult to keep a good sight picture um, through this rather small aperture sight when the gun's bouncing around in full auto. All right, now I'm out of ammunition. The magazine's empty. I could change the magazine, but the Johnson can also accept five round stripper clips. So. We have a little stripper clip guide here. And I should, we'll put that on safe first. I should be able to stuff a stripper clip in here, load that right up, put it back into auto. One of the few guns of, of this period that was set up for topping off in basically in a live combat condition. You don't have to pull the mag out. You don't have to open the action. Uh, whether the bolt's open or closed, you can reload it by stripper clip right from the other side of the action. And that was a real help 
uh, I think to a lot of the Marines who are using these guns, because they didn't really have pouches for these magazines. Um, there was some web gear for them, but really very little. And I think a lot of guys probably did a lot of reloading with stripper clips. Now, for the paramarines, the other gun that they could have used in U.S. service at this time was the BAR. BAR was certainly a popular gun, a very well-regarded gun, substantially heavier than the Johnson, and also not something that was really feasible for paratroops. And that's the, large, the, the biggest reason why the Johnson was adopted, was because of its capability for paratroops. However, what the Marines found was that this was a really handy, portable, mobile gun. In fact, a lot of them took the bipods off, ditched the bipods to get rid of even a bit more weight. Unfortunately, for that reason, bipods are really scarce today. It's not uncommon to find Johnsons that don't have the bipods. And if you do, well, good luck ever finding a bipod for them. So let's see how this is from the hip. Well, start with the shoulder. That's a little tricky to control. Now I am shooting it right-handed and I'm left-handed, uh, but it really tends to pull off to the side, that concussive recoil that you get. Um, that's, that's definitely still a thing from the shoulder. Let me try it left-handed and see if that helps any. No, it's just as difficult for me to shoot left-handed as it was right-handed. Uh, I'm also getting a little bit of an issue here with the last round in each magazine. Um, one of the interesting things about the Johnson is the magazine spring pushes to here, and you will end up with the last couple of cartridges kind of floating loose uh, in the action. You can see this one had a little bit of a feed issue. So we'll pull that out of there, and then let's try some shooting from the hip. Firing from the hip is always something that's been popular, uh, and I can certainly understand troops in a place like Guadalcanal wanting to do that. So let's give it a try. Pull it in tight, hopefully tight enough. There's a tremendous amount of concussion that comes off this thing. Like, it's, it's, it's really kind of surprising in a way. This is the exact same cartridge that the M1 uses, and yet, this just seems like so much, such a more, uh, it sounds more powerful. It's not. It's literally the same cartridge, same barrel length, or very close to the same barrel length. Why this gun has so much more Sturm and Drang to it is, I don't honestly know, but it certainly does. And there are some marine accounts of the, the, the the concussion, the recoil, the noise, well, not the recoil, the concussion, the noise of the Johnson had a significant impressive effect on the Japanese. And that was it. I'm totally out of ammo. All right, guys, it's been a real treat to get a chance to actually try out a Marine Corps Johnson light machine gun at the range. A big thanks to Morphe's for giving me this opportunity. Um, there are not a lot of guns, I think, that have, in the U.S. military, that have a better combination of all the cool characteristics. The Johnson looks cool. It was in some of the most iconic battles of, of the Second World War for the United States. It's an effective gun. It's a reliable gun. It was well-liked by the men who used it. Today, sadly, but predictably, they're pretty darn rare to find, and this is a fantastic example of one. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I have one magazine left, and so there's only one thing I can do with that. And it doesn't involve the semi-auto switch. Oh, thanks for watching. Thanks, Morphe's. We will try using the sight. There we go. That'll rattle your bell.